Hello and welcome to another of Glitch Free Gaming's Game of the Year videos. This is editor in chief Ben. I wasn't able to join the guys for the podcast, but here I am going to make my top five games of 2018. Coming in at number five is Forza Horizon 4. The Forza games have always been solid, and Horizon 4 was no exception. Having the map based in the UK was obviously a massive win for UK fans of the game, and racing around the familiar streets of Edinburgh and down and around Bamburgh Castle where I've been on holiday a couple of times felt great. It really brought me back to the good old days of Project Gotham Racing 2. It's also the most fun I've had in a Subaru Impreza since Gran Turismo 2. Graphically it's stunning and as always there's plenty to do in a variety of different events. Add on the fact that we were basically given the game for free as Game Pass subscribers and it was a win-win. Shame about the wheel spin system though. I had a bit of a year playing turn-based strategies. I started the year by finally getting around to playing XCOM 2, then came along the likes of Battletech and This Is The Police 2, both of which had a very good shot of being in my top 5. That was until I played Phantom Doctrine, and I played a lot of Phantom Doctrine. The turn-based element of Phantom Doctrine is executed perfectly. Just like you hope your strategy is when you're trying to stay in stealth mode. The game is also just as punishing as XCOM when things go wrong. But it's what Phantom Doctrine offers you in between missions that sets it apart. You're managing a network of agents across the globe, laundering money for funds to upgrade your hideout, gathering intel by interrogating captured agents, and managing your heat level just in case you need to pack up and move the hideout. For me though, the highlight was the investigation boards, bringing all that intel that you uncover onto a board and physically trying to tie all the strings together so that they make sense and uncover the next part of the story. It really helped with the immersion of Phantom Doctrine. And that's why it's number four in my top five games of the year. Most people were excited about Two Point Hospital being the spiritual successor to Theme Hospital that had taken forever to be made. But I'll admit, I hadn't played Theme Hospital until a couple of years ago, and it was showing its age by then. That didn't stop me from being excited about the prospect of Two Point Hospital though, and I was very happy that that excitement was met and satisfied by a great game when it came out. On the face of it, you have this cute, cartoonish game that is full of tongue-in-cheek humour, but when you really get into the game, it has the fully-fledged deep simulation mechanics that will keep you engaged once you've heard all the jokes. The game already had a deep campaign mode before, sh shortly after release, they brought out the sandbox mode. There's enough in here to keep your simulation brain fully engaged, and that's why Two Point Hospital is at number three in my list. Safe and sound at home again, let the waters roar, Jack. I can almost guarantee you that this game won't be on anybody else's top five for 2018 but I absolutely loved Nuntuck It. People who know me or read many of my reviews know that I enjoy all of the following things. Character development, random events, pause and play mechanics, turn-based combat, random number generated or dice systems, and most of all, sea shanties. Long we've tossed on the rolling main, now we're safe for sure, Jack. Don't forget your old shipmates. Rolly, 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 ride, oh, when the Nantucket has all of these things, and a fantastic storyline to boot. I mean, it should when it's based off the setting of Moby Dick. I also really enjoyed the hand-drawn style to the art of Nantucket. The fact that the map, which is the main area of gameplay, is exactly that. A hand-drawn map sitting on a table surface. If you enjoyed games like Crusader Kings 2 or Sunless Sea, then I fully recommend that you take a look at Nantucket, my number two game for 2018. Come on, take a shot. Come on, take your best shot, please. Eh? Grow up. While Nantucket won't be on many Game of the Year lists, you can be damn sure that Red Dead Redemption 2 will be, and deservedly so. The world that Rockstar have created is just fantastic and incredibly immersive. Red Dead Redemption 2 was pretty much the only thing I played over the Christmas holidays, but I wasn't even engaging in the story, just wandering around this big open world, exploring and hunting all the wildlife, and just getting lost in the wild. 
At one point I was about 40% complete in the game, having only done 18% of the story. And that's not to say that the story isn't great, because it is. There's just so much to do and enjoy in Red Dead Redemption 2 that I'll be playing it well into 2019. Hey, I might even finish it, which would be a first for me. Red Dead Redemption 2 is my number one game of 2018. So there you have it, my top 5 games of 2018. Remember to head over to our website glitchfreegaming.com to check out all our latest reviews. We'll hopefully be doing a lot more in 2019. And remember to subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to YouTube, and just hit us up on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, all the best for a great gaming 2019.